As it currently stands, there are four engine manufacturers on the grid, Mercedes, Honda, Ferrari, and Renault. And out of those four, there has only been one true powerhouse in Formula One since the start of the hybrid era, Mercedes. But since the hybrid introduction in 2014, no other manufacturer besides Honda has joined into the hybrid party. With Formula One engines being monstrously expensive, nobody besides Honda wanted in. Not even Ford wanted in, and Toyota, who has a history of building hybrid road cars, hasn't been seen since they withdrew from Formula 1 at the end of the 2009 season. Toyota cited the 2008 global recession as their reason for leaving, and Honda had done the exact same thing the year before. As a reference, the 1.6 litre turbo hybrids found in modern Formula 1 cars are costing around 10.5 million US dollars as a complete package. A further reference, in 1991, Eddie Jordan had spent just north of that to finish 5th in the Constructors' Championship. The full car itself is around $12.5 million, and that's without any research and development lobbed on top of it. The gearboxes are nearly half a million apiece, and the halo costs nearly $20,000. It's true, Formula 1 is very expensive these days. But in the background, Formula 1 is doing little bits and pieces not only to cut down on some of these costs, like implementing the cost cap this year, but they're also trying to do some extra changes to entice other manufacturers into the sport. One of these manufacturers is Volkswagen. You might have seen some of the whisperings and rumours on the internet already, and whether they join as VW or as Audi or Porsche or as another brand remains to be seen. Skoda. Please join as Skoda. But because of the sheer amount of money that's been spent by not just Mercedes to keep their power advantage, but by Ferrari, Renault and especially Honda to be able to catch up since 2015, nobody else wants to join in as they'd have to spend literal billions of dollars to catch up, and they probably won't be able to compete until they know the engines work and are reliable enough, and by then they've spent far too much money to go back. And with so much money being spent, nobody's going to want to settle for finishing 14th every race. A company like Volkswagen, or any company for that matter, will be spending that money to get the best return. And that return is winning. The VW Group, it has to be said, has got experience of building hybrid engines for racing cars anyway. They had the diesel Audi R18 and the Porsche 919s that dominated the top class of Le Mans in the 2010s. So what is Formula 1 trying to do to entice VW and others to join in? Well, they're very close to announcing changes to the hybrid engines that should come into effect in 2026, and that involves the removal of the MGU-H. Formula 1 hybrid engines are made up of four components that you might have seen the broadcasters and pundits and commentators talking about on broadcasts. First, you have the internal combustion engine, or the ICE, which is a 1.6-litre V6 that is a downscaling of the previous engines used up until 2013, which were 2.4-litre V8s. Then there's the turbocharger that forces more air into the engine for more consistent and bigger combustion in the ICE to therefore generate more power. Then it's the MGUK, which is basically the cursed system used from around 2009 to 2013 turned up to 11. And while the cursed system was used manually as a push to pass or as a boost of acceleration coming out of corners, the ERS that is used now is more computer controlled and can be deployed at varying rates depending on speed. So for example, the cars might deploy more ERS energy at a higher speed at somewhere like Monza, but might have a more balanced output at somewhere like Silverstone or Catalonia or Montreal or something like that, but the drivers can override that computer deployment by getting the full beans all the time by pressing a button on the steering wheel. And if you've driven the Ferrari SF70H or the SF15T in a set of Corsa for example, or the MP430 or the aforementioned LMP1s in iRacing, you might already be familiar with what I'm talking about. I might have to do a video on it that's more in depth. I did do one a couple of years ago, but I think I can improve on that. But you know, let me know if you want to see that in the comments. Now the final part is the MGU-H, which recovers energy from the turbocharger. And while this improves the efficiency no end in Formula 1 cars, these units are ridiculously expensive to develop. They're also stupidly complex, and the simple matter is, road cars like the Hyundai Ionic and the Toyota Prius just aren't using them. Road cars instead generate their electrical energy through an MGUK type of device that harvests electrical energy through braking. By eliminating the ultra complex MGUH, it lowers costs and makes the engines much simpler to develop. In theory, that is, because we all know how this stuff ends up going. And according to the BBC, the FIA has had a hard time trying to sell this idea, particularly to Mercedes, as they A, want to protect their advantage, and B, all of the manufacturers have now pumped billions into developing these engines and are going to see the ditching of the MGU-H as money being wasted. The BBC also notes that these teams have all now been swayed into agreeing, but they've all gone, yes, but. 
Basically, what they've done is said we'll do it provided the engines remain hybrids instead of going more towards what they were using in the mid 80s. I know that's not what a lot of you wanted to hear, but that's what's happening. They'll also increase the amount of power available to be deployed by the MGUK so it compensates for the loss of power that would have come from the MGUH, if that makes any sense. So again, in theory, the engines will become less complex, they might get lighter, the cars might get smaller as a result because there's less gubbins going on, and most importantly, the engines will be less expensive and also be more road relevant. So we might not just get more manufacturers involved, but maybe another privateer. The teams will also have to build all new engines in 2026, which means every single one of the manufacturers will be sent back to square one as they had done around 2013, 2014 or so. Everybody having the reset button hit will mean that VW will be able to enter without having to spend stupid amounts with which to catch up. Although, knowing Formula 1, the costs will drop down from $10.5 million to $10.45 million. The FIA will claim they've cracked it, and we continue on as normal. But while the teams have accepted that the MGUH is dropped, there are some refusals to some other points. The FIA wants to put a spending cap on development to which one team has outright refused. Guess which long-standing team with a history of foot stomping has said no to some of these ideas? Correct. It's McLaren. No, it's not. It's Ferrari. It was made worse when the FIA suggested that a new manufacturer such as VW be allowed to spend more money as a new manufacturer in its first season to allow them to hit the ground running once they've entered the sport. But as we've seen with what the VW Group has been able to do in the World Endurance Championship and Le Mans for about 10 years, Ferrari's worries on this occasion are actually in the interests of sport rather than the interests of Ferrari. There are also articles across the internet that point to the rumoured team-up between VW and Red Bull with Honda pulling factory support at the end of the season and Red Bull taking over the engine development side, there are worries that Red Bull will just hand VW the engine data, use VW money to make it good, and then use VW's you can spend more as it's your first year privileges on improving it further, and then splitting the engine data between the two teams. But it's not just that, because there is an interesting point that Andrew Benson made in his BBC article this morning. As we've already covered, Volkswagen is interested in entering Formula 1 and all this talk was happening before, but on Thursday last week, Formula 1 signed a 10-year deal to host a race in Qatar. Which country has around a 15% stake in the VW Group? Qatar. Formula 1 is also trying to reduce its CO2 output by moving to fuels made of biomass or just full-on synthetic fuel. Now, the synthetic fuel is made by mixing CO2 with hydrogen to do some sort of magic, but either way, Formula 1 wants to have some sort of less CO2 producing fuel in use by 2026. It's already switched over to the new E10 stuff, and the general thinking is that yes, the synthetic fuel is an option, but it can produce a lot of CO2 to make, so it doesn't actually do anything in terms of the long haul with the environment if you catch my drift. But which manufacturer is building a synthetic fuel plant in Punta Arenas, Chile? Why, that would be Porsche, owned by the Volkswagen Group. So is this actually about getting a new manufacturer in and getting cheaper engines, or is this what it's normally about? Here comes the money! Here comes the money! Money, 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 money! So this is the part where I hand things over to you, the viewers, because that's what Pressing Issues is about. I present what's happening in the world of motorsport, and then you have an argument about it in the comment section down below. I don't know why YouTubers insist on saying down below, it's where the comment section's always been. But like I say, leave any and all thoughts on this matter in the comments and get a discussion going. And while you're scrolling down, why not give the video a thumbs up so I know I've done a good job. And if you're not already, subscribe and get that bell on so you never miss out on one of my future videos. Massive thanks as always go out to the patrons of Patreon for their continued support and if you want to join them in supporting me on a more personal level or just get in on the Discord chatter then I'll leave all the links you need down in the description box for you. So until next time I've been Aidan Mord, have a great day wherever you live in the world and I'll see you all again soon for another video. So until then, goodbye.